Hello and welcome back to Ellie Talks Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit the Avada theme installed on your WordPress site. If you're new here, my channel is dedicated to creative technology. That's industry standard equipment for film, photography, and audio, but it's also content around the software and the tools that creatives and business owners can use for their day-to-day -day operations. I'm so glad you're here. Now let's get into updating your site. In case you're brand new to the back end of your website, here are a few things that you should know. Your website is hosted on an online platform. Usually this is something like WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, or a variety of other places to hold all of the content on your website. You may also have purchased something to host your WordPress site like Bluehost or SiteGround. These are just terms for the software and the systems that keep your website running. If you're using WordPress, then you're going to have a theme installed. This theme is a set of rules and frameworks that tell your website how to act. If your website was professionally designed, there's a good chance that the person who created it for you made a lot of these rules and inherent behaviors of your website for you. So all you have to do is make tweaks like changing a color, updating text, swapping out an image. So that's really what we're gonna be looking at in this video. In fact, you can check out the description to skip to what you need, but just so you know what to expect, I'm going to show you how to edit text on a page, how to edit images by changing them on a page, how to change the background of a container and a column, how to edit links, how to add a video, how to add a content block, and how to add a blog post. There's a lot of information in this video, so get comfortable, and now let's get into it. Once you've logged into your website by going through your host like Bluehost or SiteGround or by going to yourdomain.com slash wp-admin, you'll see something like this. This is your dashboard. On the Avada theme, there will be some options here. Some of it's training, some of it's news, and you also can pay attention to the theme updates. Sometimes you'll want to run those right away. The first thing that we're going to look at doing is updating text on a page. So if you are on your website and you notice that you wanted to change something, you would go over into this left-hand bar and tap Pages. Now you can see all of the pages on your site. So if you want to update your home page, you would click on the name of that page or you could click Edit. Now you're looking at the Avada Builder. Let's scroll down and get familiar with it. So you'll see blue bars. They might be collapsed or they might be expanded. If you see a blue bar and nothing underneath it, it's collapsed. So you'll want to click this arrow to see the content inside that container. If you don't know what you're looking for as you're scrolling or say you aren't sure where the phrase is that you're trying to find, you can edit it from the live view, but let's edit it from this view first. So I'm going to go into the desktop container for my quick bio and I'm going to click this pen. It's going to allow me to edit the element and in this case it's a text element. Now I'm looking at a text block so I can type right inside here and change anything I want to. And then when you're done, you'll hit the save button I didn't change anything though, so I'm going to hit cancel. Other things you can do here is change the orientation of your text if you want it centered, aligned right. You can also add a text link by highlighting the text and clicking this link button, typing in what you want, or you can find a page on your website and link directly to it. You can also change the type of text so if you are familiar with different headings and their importance and how the Google SEO and the robots read that, you may want to change that as well. If you're looking to change text or the style of your text without changing the heading, then you're going to want to go into the Avital Live option that's up here. Make sure that um, anytime you save something within a container, it's not actually saved. So you will want to click update as well right here before you leave the page. Again, I didn't change anything. So I'm going to click into Avada Live and hit OK. Let's collapse that for the moment. So now we're looking at an approximate live version of the site. Um, it's not the exact same spacing as what you might see on a desktop because your website is responsive if, if it's built on Avada. So it'll look a little bit different on different sized screens and because there's so many different screen sizes these days, it's always a little bit different. 
Okay, so if we wanted to change text in this same box, you can just click on it and start typing. If you highlight the text, it will give you some of those formatting options like we saw in the text box, or you can see all of the options here. And this is also where if I wanted to change the size of the text without changing how Google reads the importance of the text, I would click on this A and I can change font size of the highlighted text. I can change um, how it looks. So if I wanted a different font here, I could do that. I can also change the line height so you can see it's expanding the distance between these lines and I can change the letter spacing. When you're done, you'll click that check mark and it will save it here, but you'll have to hit save again. I'm not going to save it because I don't want to and we're going to exit out to the back end. We are back on the back end of your page. So now we're going to look at changing an image. I'm going to go back down to my bio section. You can see I have an image here of me sitting at a computer. So if you're on the back end and you want to change it, you would click that pen tool again and you could click remove or edit. If you remove it, it removes the image. Um, I'll put it back. So this would be if you clicked edit or if you're uploading a new image, you would just click that editor and then you would add an image. Insert into page. If this has already been designed for you and you're just swapping out the image, then the settings of how it's oriented, centered, aligned left, um, if it's an automatic dimensions or if you know it's being cropped into a square dimension or something else, all of that will be set and all you'll have to do is change the image. If it's a brand new image, the process on this side would be the same, but you may not know how it's going to look on your site. So you can come back to the Avada Live Editor and then take a look. If you're not happy with how it looks, you can click the Image Options tool on this side. I'm going to put myself right here. And now you can play with that, maybe the aspect ratio. So if you wanted it to be a square, it will automatically crop it to fill the space. Or if you wanted it to be a different size image, right? So you can get some of that preset or you can do custom and then just drag this bar to see how you want it to look. You can also change an image from this part of the page by using those same remove or edit options. It looks a little different in the Avada Live view, but it's the same functions. So once you're done, you can hit save. And then if your website was designed to be optimized for desktop and mobile, you've edited the desktop version, but you'll need to see how it's looking on mobile as well. So for the sites that I design for my clients, I create different sections. Um, so it's almost two websites within a single website. And I'll show you what that looks like on the back end. But on the front end, you would just want to make sure that you toggle to the correct view what size device to make sure that you're editing the actual correct section. Let's go to the back end here, exit to page back end. Now, once you have your image, you may want it to be linking. So if someone clicks on it, it'll take them to somewhere else. You do that when you're inside the image editing it, you'll scroll down until you see image link URL, and that's where you'll put that link. It can go somewhere else on the page using an anchor link, which we don't cover in this tutorial because it's a code snippet, or you can um, have it go anywhere else on the internet. <laughs> so you would just find the page you want it to link to. For example, maybe I wanted it to link to my home page, So I would open a new tab or window in my browser. I would copy this URL. And then I would come back here to the image link URL. I would paste it and then I would hit save. 
and we're going to talk a little bit more about containers. So as I mentioned before, these blue bars are showing you where a container is. Containers hold content. I like to organize content in this way on the Avada theme sites that I build. So we have the container and then we have columns. That's these gray outline bars. And then we have content and they're called elements. So you can see here I have some very skinny columns and then I have a wider column. And this is a desktop container. Some people don't label their containers. So if you're seeing something different on your mobile site versus your desktop site, you would just want to click into this design and look at what size screen it's showing on. So if you're noticing that the content is different, you'll want to open up each element on your site and look for what screen it's displaying on. If it's highlighted blue, it's displaying on that size of screen. For the websites that I build, I do like to label it so that it's easier for me to recognize right away. That's how you know what content in a container would be visible on desktop or mobile. You can also determine each piece of content, each element, if it's going to be visible on desktop or mobile, again, right here. Remember though, that if something is set for a container, it will apply that to everything inside the container. So if you're getting frustrated because maybe you want this element or piece of text to be visible on every single screen, but the container is set to only be visible on desktop or only be visible on mobile, then what you do inside the container won't matter. Um, so just double check those settings. If you're looking for a piece of content on the Avada Live site when you're editing, or if you're just looking at the site on your phone, um, that's what you should check. Let's talk a little bit more about containers. So you can have a container background. And a lot of times if you have a background image for a section of your website, it's either a container background or a column background. Let's look at your container background first. So you can see right here, we'll go into this background tab. And right now the background is transparent, showing the overall color of the website, which I have set for mine as white. You can change the background to be a gradient color for the container or it could be an image. It looks like for me, I have my background set as an image. You can also use a background video by uploading a video or by pulling the URL from YouTube or Vimeo. You can choose a pattern to fill the container or you can choose a mask to cover the container and show the background of the site. Since I already have a background image, there are a few other things that you'd want to look at. Let's say, oh, you want to change the image that's the background of your container. You would click edit or remove. Maybe I want to make it a pair of headphones. So once you've selected your image or you've uploaded your image um, by clicking upload files and selecting, it'll pull it off of your computer. You want to scroll down on this right hand side and make sure that the size it's showing is full size. Because the background of a container on a website is a very large image, you need something very high resolution. It does not automatically select full size inside of Vada. Usually it's very tiny. So you'll want to make sure that you select full size when you change your background image or add one for the first time. Something else you can do with your background image, if you noticed on my website, the image moves a little bit when you scroll. This is called a parallax effect. And I turned it on right here, background parallax. There are a lot of other things you can do, like slightly change the orientation of the image, depending on how it looks on your website. But that's how you generally change the background of your site. And you can play with these features if it doesn't look exactly the way that you would want it to. So maybe you don't want to add a background to the whole container or section of your page, but you do want a background on your column. I most often use column backgrounds when I'm adding color gradients or color blocks behind text. And where you'll do that is you'll come here 
to this, and um, all of the columns have dimensions. One of one means it's filling the entire container. It gets smaller from there. But you'll click the pen icon right here, and then you'll come over to background. You can see I just have a white background, but you could have a gradient background or an image for each column as well. Let's change it to a gradient. And I'm going to start with this lilac pink. That's one of my tertiary colors. And I'm going to have it go to a completely opaque color. So opacity means it's see-through, right? So we're going to have it go from lilac to be completely see-through. And I'm going to hit save. Now we're going to click um, preview. So you can see this lilac gradient that I added is in front of the container background, but it's behind my text. So if I like that, I'll keep it. I don't. I can't save it from the preview window, so I'll close the preview window, and I would click update. What I'm going to actually do, though, because I'm not keeping that for my website, is come back to the background, and you'll see it's a little confusing because it's still showing this color as the background, but it's wrong. I'll go into the gradient, and I'm going to take it out by turning both of these white, and then I'll come back here and just reinforce that I actually want the background to be white and click save and then I'll click update. So that's how you change the background color or image in a specific column of content. Now we're going to talk about adding a video to your web page. If you're looking at your web page and you want to add a video to it, you will go to the correct section if it's a container, if it's inside a column, and then you'll click the add element option. Now you have a lot to choose from here. There's all kinds of stuff. A lot of it you'll probably never use on your website. We're not going to cover all of these today, but what we are going to look for is a video block. There are a few ways you can do it. You can add it through a code block if it's a custom code. You can add it from down here. We have a YouTube block. There's also a Vimeo block right here. So if you're hosting your video on YouTube or Vimeo, that's what you would do. And if you want to upload a video, you would click here. I'm going to show you how to do all of these options just so that you know exactly how to add your video. We'll start with the video block. You can see immediately it gives you the option to upload a video. A word of caution here, when you have a video uploaded directly to your website, it slows down the loading time whenever you can try to host your video somewhere else and link it using that embed code, the Vimeo widget or the YouTube widget to actually show the video versus uploading it directly. But since we're here, let's go ahead and do that. So you can see it shows you what file types you can use. It can be an MP4 or a WebM. You're going to go to select files and then you can choose from anything on your computer or on a connected hard drive like the one I have here. I'm going to use a video that I created to promote a client's project. You can see it's 20 megabytes, which is way too big for a website to host, but for the sake of showing you, here we go. I should say it's not too big, but it will impact the load speed of your page. Once it's uploaded, you'll want to give it a title and a description. This will allow the robots, you can add a caption too if you want it to show on your video, this will allow the robots to know what they're looking at um, instead of it just being a video block. And then we'll insert it into the page. There are a few other things you can do here. Video preloading determines how quickly it will load. Do you want the video to loop? Do you want it to autoplay? Do you want it muted? It? And then you can upload a preview image similar to a thumbnail that you might upload on YouTube so that it looks exactly how you want it to when people scroll past it. You can choose what size screen it shows on, which we already talked about. And then you can go over into design and choose some more things. Do you want a color overlay for the video? Do you want it to have a border? Do you want it to be centered? I do. And then do you want there to be space between this video element and the things above and below it. So we'll hit save and then you can see the video block is right here and let's preview it. Here's the video we just added and it's on autoplay. So you can interact with it, you can unmute it, and you can see if you like it. Let's go back and add it using a YouTube widget. 
So you can see that I use a code block on my website and a linked button to YouTube, but if you wanted to add a video hosted on YouTube, you can use the YouTube widget. You'll scroll down in your elements to YouTube, and then you'll pull the video URL. Let's do that now. So we'll go to youtube.com and we'll go to our channel. So you can get the share link by clicking these three buttons and the arrow if it's your featured video, or you can click into any video on your channel and copy the URL in your browser. The last way you can get this is to click the share button below the video and copy it here. Then we'll go back to the Avada editor and paste that URL. You can decide if you want the video to be aligned left, center, or right, if you want it to autoplay, and any other parameters and attributes that you might want it to have. In the Extras tab, you can add structured data. I'm not keeping this one, so I'm going to leave it off. All right, let's hit Save. So now this video is going to be underneath the desktop version of my blog intro, and we're going to click Preview. And here it is. So you can see that there's no space between this video and my watch on YouTube button. So I would want to change that. You can do that by coming back to the back end, clicking the pen tool and finding the margin. That's the space between your elements. Let's just do a small amount, 25 uh, above the video, preview that again. And now there's some space separating it, which I prefer for my elements. That's how you add a video using the YouTube block. We're going to delete that, and now we're going to add a video using the Vimeo block. You can go to Vimeo, and once you've logged in, you can see the different videos that are hosted on your site. You can get the link right here. Copy the link, go back to your website, and paste it. Again, choose the alignment, choose if you want a margin. We already know that we do and then you can hit save. Let's preview this. Now we can see that it worked because the video is private, so it won't display it here, but it did, um, yeah. Since it's private, you'll get an invalid embed code, but if it was a public video, you would be able to play it. The last way we'll look at embedding a video is through code, which is how I do it on my own website. So you would add a new element and it would be a code block. Let's go into the one that I have. You can see that I have an iframe embed code. You would find this on YouTube. When you go to your video, you click share, and then you click embed. And here's that iframe. It's going to show you exactly how it'll look. You can even choose it to start at a different time and whether or not you want the player controls to show on your website. You would copy this code and paste it right here. I've already done that. So you already know what it looks like. That's how you would embed a video. Let's say you want to add brand new content. You don't want to edit something. Um, you might want to add a new container. So you can go to the section of your website that you'd want to add a container to that would go in between the existing containers. Or you can scroll to the bottom of your site, well, the page, and you can add a container at the bottom. You can choose how many columns it has preset, but you can also change this later. And now we're looking at our new container, which I'll label as new demo container, all screens, because I'm leaving it mobile on every size of screen. And we have an empty column here. If you wanted to have two half columns displaying content that run this way on your site, you would change it here. Go to design of your column and choose the size that you want it to be. For example, one half. Every time you hit save, you will have to scroll back to that section of the builder. Now we have our half column, and I'll duplicate here. And then maybe you wanted to add some text, so you'll go into this add an element option, and we'll scroll to find the element you want to add, text block, and then you would type inside it like I already showed you, and you would hit save. Now you'll go ahead and add another element in this column if you want to. Again, it can be anything. Maybe we'll want to add a checklist. You can choose what icon the checklist has, and then you can add content here. And for the sake of the demo, I'm going to clone this bullet point rather than retype another one. You can style the checklist icon color here. 
and choose some other options. Just scroll through and take a look at these if you are styling a checklist. All right, now that we have our new container with some text and a checklist, let's hit preview. We'll scroll all the way to the bottom of our page. Here's our demo text and our checklist. So we've successfully added that container. I don't want this on my page, however, and if you don't want something that's currently on your website to still be there, you can delete it. You can delete the element by hovering over it and clicking the delete button. You can delete a column by hovering over the column delete button, or you can delete the container right here. And now it's gone. Be sure to save your work. Let's take a look at how to add a new blog post. So on your left hand menu here, I have a lot of plugins on my site, but what you'll look for is the posts button. And you'll just click on that. This is where if you already have a blog, you'll see all of your existing posts or you can click add new. We'll give our post a title and now we have the option of simply typing inside of this box. This is the easiest way to add content to your blog. You can add text or you can add um, images and video by adding media. So if you don't want to deal with the Avada Builder and um, the more complex building elements, sample text, you can type away. You can change the size by highlighting and changing it to a different form of heading. You can copy and paste from the Notes app or a Google document into this box, or you can even add media. So you can add existing images, and what you'll do is just select it. You can see the check over it and then insert into post. And there it is. If you um, tap on the image, you can resize it by hovering over these corners and dragging. You can change if it's um, aligned center, aligned left. You can hit enter above it or you can hit enter below it to continue typing or you can go all the way underneath until it's not alongside it anymore and type here instead. So this is the easiest way to add a blog post or you can use the Avada Builder by clicking this button and then we're looking at a brand new page and you would use all of the elements that I showed you how to use earlier in this tutorial to create your blog. So you would start by adding a container and now this is starting to look familiar, right? We have our container with one column and we'll add an element like text. And then you can start typing your blog here as well. So that's an overview of how to use the blogging feature. If you want to start a blog, but you haven't yet, there's a good chance that you'll see filler blog posts like this. Avada includes these in a really standard layout. So what you'll want to do is either edit and publish them as you go along and you can see these are already published so you would want to change that immediately because they're filler posts or you can select all of them and go to bulk actions and move to trash but you can also just go into quick edit and um, unpublish them and then click update it's a great way to have a starting point for your blog. If you are brand new, if you're not a web developer, if you just want to go in and write, this is another way you can do that. You can simply edit one of these filler posts using the tools that I've already shown you how to do. The only difference is that you'll be looking at something like this. What you'll want to do is click Avada Builder up here and now it looks like a format that makes sense and you'll be able to edit it however you might want to. And then when you're done, there are a few other things you'll want to do. So if you have categories for your blog, you can see that I have quite a few for Ali Talks Tech. You'll add a new category or you'll select one that you already have if you want to organize your blogs by category. You can add a featured image. That's the image that previews when people go to your blog page so that they kind of know what they're looking at. And um, we'll talk about this in a separate video, but if you have the Yoast SEO plugin like I do, you would want to add some more information about this page. But if you're just adding a blog, that's how you do it. And when you're done, you can 
publish it immediately or you can select a date to schedule it for and then you'll hit publish and then you're done. When you use the Avada Builder, there's something called post cards that you can use across your site to share specific types of blogs. This is a really great way to filter your blogs if you're displaying things around a certain category and you don't want your blogs to just show up in chronological order. So let me show you what those look like. For me, I use postcards on my blog shell page. So that page is where I host all of my blog content and it's where I drive traffic when people are clicking to read my blog. So you can see I have a postcard here. Let's click on it. Postcards are a preset layout that pulls the information that you tell it you need. In this case, I have this card displaying all of my posts. But if I wanted to display posts that were just about videos, I would go to Terms, leave it as Categories because that's how I organize my blogs, and then go down to Video, and now it will only display the blogs that I have said are in the video category. So this is a really easy way to organize your content when you're displaying blogs. If you don't like the way your postcard looks, in fact, let's take a look at this one. So this is how my postcard looks. It shows the image, it shows an excerpt from the post, and it has a great background. If you don't like the way that looks, then here's what you would do. You're gonna go back into where it says postcards, and you're going to find which card it is. Um, Avada will have some presets for you with different colors and layouts, so it might just be a number like 2295, but I created one specifically for this blog. If you don't like it, you'll just go to Edit Postcard. All right, so this is the title of the postcard, and here's how I have it laid out. I have the postcard image, and I have the content. So maybe you want to make it a different layout. I have everything in a single column here, but you can make it rows or even blocks. So um, you can also know if block is selected, it won't do flex positioning. Um, it'll, it'll do floated elements. That may not mean a lot to people who aren't developers. You really can just try these and see how they look and if you like them, if you don't like what you're already working with. And then if you wanted it to show other information, I have it showing an excerpt of the blog, you could have it show the full blog if you wanted. Your other options here are featured images slider, so if you have more than one featured image. Meta are all the tags and categories that you assign to it. Shopping element, the postcard image, which I already have, and then there are some e-commerce options here as well. Postcards can be used for products. So once you have this styled the way that you want for your blog, you'll click update and then you'll go back to your blog, click Save, and click Preview. And then you'll be able to see the changes that you made with your postcard and decide if you like it or not. One of my biggest tips for you when you are working on your website is to save often. Every time you open an element to edit, hit Save. Every time you change a section or a container, hit Update. Um, the, or if you're in a blog, you'll hit Save Draft every single time. This is really important because websites do take a lot of work and after you've done all your hard work, the last thing you want is to lose it. So saving as you go is going to be your best and safest form of working on your website. I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you in updating your website. Of course, if you have questions, you can drop them in the comments below. You can also check out this video that YouTube thinks you'd probably really like from my channel and hit subscribe to stick around. I have content coming out every single week with a demo on Tuesday, a tutorial on Thursday, creative tech news over the week, and sometimes a special video that I throw in here and there. Thanks so much for stopping by my channel and I hope to see you again real soon.